Hello there, welcome back to Blue Harvest Vintage Toys. On today's video, I'm just going to go through the top 10 Star Wars items that are sold at auction. Now, as you may or may not know, I write articles, I've uh, had a couple published, and I've helped out with other articles too. But I was asked to come up with the top 10 Star Wars items from a media outlet, a PR company really, that sells the articles two media outlets so i wanted to do a really good job on it i wanted to get the facts straight uh you may see if you if you're on my twitter line that i put up articles that people put up in these um tabloid newspapers and other articles other websites where the articles are really bad um not really well researched the facts are incorrect usually when you see a toy a top 10 toy article the facts are totally wrong, especially when you get to uh, Star Wars 1. I'm sure you've all seen them and be really annoyed and really wanted to tell whoever wrote that article where they went wrong. And if you're a geek like me, which I think you are if you're watching this uh, YouTube channel, that it really is annoying. So I wanted to do the best I could, get every, all the facts straight, everything like that. So I'm going to go through the top 10 now. But I just want to say the article that did get published didn't have the full top 10 that I actually put forward to them. I put forward all this top 10 that was really in-depth and a lot of detail into it. I even sent over uh, how to collect to go with the article as well because that was the brief that they sent me. But once you send that over to them, uh, they can use it as they see fit, basically. And the article that they did put together from my work was sent out to over 130 different media outlets uh, tabloid newspapers and magazines and even to websites like loveantiques.com so i've waffled on long enough now let's uh, let's get into the top 10 so number 10 we have posters i do actually have three in this category so number one is a rare star wars concept poster for the empire strikes back uh, sold for twenty six thousand four hundred dollars make it the most expensive movie movie poster from the franchise ever sold at an auction According to Heritage Auctions, the poster was expected to sell between $5,000 and $10,000. A long-time pop culture collector who asked to remain anonymous purchased the poster. This poster is considered to be one of the more rare posters in the entire Star Wars trilogy, said Gray Smith, director of vintage posters at Heritage Auctions, in a statement. This poster is unique as it features a complete castral artwork. In the original colour palette for the second in George Lucas's trilogy. So 10B, we have Star Wars Happy Birthday style one sheet poster. To celebrate the one year anniversary of episode 4's release, the studio shipped this poster to theatres showing the blockbuster 12 months later. By then, Star Wars action figures were a toy star phenomena, and so they were assembled around a candle topped to birthday cake for a poster. That today's market would put a uh, three to five thousand dent in your wallet. And just a little mini fact on that poster is there's no Jawa in it. Final cape or cloth cape version. And 10C is Revenge of the Jedi. Though not the priciest Star Wars poster in the galaxy, this episode 6 one sheet is the most infamous and wildly bootlegged. Before the 1982 release of the Return of the Jedi, the movie was briefly retitled Revenge of the Jedi. The studio printed nearly 9,000 posters with that title and began shipping them to theatres. In late 82, George Lucas decided the word revenge was unbenefiting unbe a peaceful Jedi Knight, so he reverted to the original return. The previously shipped posters were recalled, while the 6,800 copies still on hand were sold via mail order to Star Wars fan club members for $9.50 each. Today, the fan club posters, tagline with the movie's 25th of May 1983 release date, can fetch up to two grand in a pristine condition. The rarer version shipped to theatres, lacking the release date, can neck 3,000 and up. But buyer beware, the market is flooded with fakes. At number nine, we have a Jawa action figure with final cape. Mentioned the Jawa twice already. Forget Luke and Daddy Darth, surely topping every kid's wish list is the original Star Wars action figures was the Jawa. Okay, not exactly, but eventually everyone bit the bullet and got a Jawa to complete their collection. 
Were you among the few to grab at their first edition Tatooine's pint-sized desert scavenger? The Jawa's signature brown cloak was made of vinyl. After the initial production run, Kenner switched to a cloth cape. Extremely scarce, a vinyl cape Jawa packaged on its original unopened card can net between $10,000 and $18,000 depending on condition. Loose uncarded specimens in cherry condition sell on eBay for around $1,200. The Jawa has achieved mythic status among collectors, so beware. Again, there's many fakes out there. At number 8, we have the Star Wars comic book, issue number 1. Is that Luke Skywalker on the cover of Marvel's premier Star Wars comic, or did Gary Busey swipe a lightsaber? In the late 1970s, Marvel began testing the market waters with a 5 cent increase, from 30 cents to 35 cents on its single issue comics. The debut issue of Star Wars, tagged with the inflated price, was distributed to only four US cities, Memphis, Toledo, Tuscaloosa, and Wilmington. If you nabbed a copy and kept it in minty mint all these years, expect to pocket up to $20,000 and laugh about Luke Busey all the way to the bank. At number seven is a Brazilian glass light Vlix figure. For on the short-lived 1985 animated series droids, Flicks might seem unfamiliar, and that's okay. It was part of a planned second series of droids action figures from Kenner. But the line was cancelled before he could get released. A few years later, a Brazilian company purchased the rights to some of the scrap toys and produced and sold them exclusively in Brazil, making him ultra-rare in the US. At uh, number 6, we have Carrie Fisher's personal copy of the Empire Strikes Back shooting script. Frustrated by George Lucas's often clunky, hokey dialogue in the Star Wars screenplay, both Kelly Fisher and Harrison Ford recall telling Lucas, George, you can type this, but you can't say it. Though the Empire Strikes Back script was penned by Lawrence Kasdan and Leah Brackett, by the time filming was underway in 79, Fisher and Ford had taken into doctoring and punching up their own lines. That is when they weren't partying all night with the Rolling Stones and showing up drunk to work the next morning. In 2017, Fisher's estate auctioned a personal hand annotated shooting script for episode 5 and collected $51,000. Sale proceeds were donated to the Jed Foundation, which works to prevent teen suicide. At number 5, we have Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi with a double telescoping lightsaber. While the ultra-rare Rocket Fett never reached production, this Obi-Wan action figure definitely did. With its double telescoping lightsaber, which Kenner swiftly abandoned, this Kenobi is only one of the select few that survive in a box. In July 2018, this figure sold for $76,000, a world record price for a vintage Star Wars toy. And number four, we have Boba Fett Rocket Firing Action Figure Prototype. Though it's never caused a child fatality, arguably the most infamous, potentially choking hazard toy of all time was the original Boba Fett action figure developed by Kenner. Nicknamed Rocket Fett, the figure wore a backpack with a mechanism that fired a small plastic missile, the perfect size for getting lodged in Junior's larynx. As any old school collector worth their bounty owner's cred knows, Rocket Fett was never released to the public. So when you'll find out today's market is strictly prototype figures, which reportedly number less than 30 and appear in various stages of production development. Confirmed sale prices have ranged between $20,000 and $116,000. At the 2019 Star Wars Celebration Convention in Chicago, a high-end dealer stunned nerds by offering a mega-rare Rocket Fett prototype with a price tag of $365,000 plus tax. So far, no takers. Number three is a Star Wars costume design sketchbook. For Star Wars archaeologists digging deep into the saga's origins, artifacts rarely get better than this original production sketchbook by the first film's Oscar-winning costume designer, John Mollo. While legendary conceptual artist Ralph McQuarrie chiefly designed the look of Star Wars universe and its characters, it was Mollo tasked with actual creating the costumes. During production of A New Hope, Molo kept his personal sketchbook with hand-drawn designs for Vader, Chewbacca, the creature container aliens and much more. This book also served as a production diary, containing notes from his meetings with George Lucas, 
Uh, under a 2018 Bonhams Gavel, this original trilogy treasure snapped up $162,000. Number two is screen use props. Now, again, this category has been split up into a few different items. So, 2A, we have a Star Wars TIE Fighter model. This TIE Fighter model was used in the battle sequence at the end of Episode 4, A New Hope, which means it's worth, taps calculator, a quarter of a million pounds. If you'd rather spend that sort of money on a house than a plastic model of a fictitious spaceship, you can always build a real TIE Fighter. German fans managed to construct a life-size ship for less than 20 grand, and suddenly that sounds like good value. Note that in 2015, one of the models used in the opening sequence of A New Hope, a Rebel Blockade Runner, sold at auction for around about $400,000. To b we have a Stormtrooper helmet. This rare helmet, worn in the Empire Strikes Back, fetches nearly a quarter of a million dollars. In October 2015, a normal Stormtrooper helmet used in the same film went for $120,000. 2C is Luke Skywalker's original lightsaber. Now then, the original lightsaber, in a world where a tiny plastic figure costs the same as a new car, you'll be surprised to learn that Luke's trusty weapon is worth a small fortune. When it was auctioned from the private collection of Star Wars producer Gary Kurtz in 2005, it fetched over £100,000. Other lots included Darth Vader's lightsaber, 67000 a Chewbacca face mask, 28000 and Skywalker's X-Wing flight suit, 40000 2D, we have Han Solo's leather jacket from The Force Awakens. The new jacket that Han Solo sports in 2015's The Force Awakens was auctioned for charity Faces, finding a cure for ep epilepsy and seizures in April 2016. Prior to going to under the hammer, Harrison Ford said that, like, unlike this cynical Han Solo, I have a good feeling about this. He was right to... 50 bidders duked it out, and the jacket eventually selling for $191,000. The cause is close to Ford's heart as his daughter suffers from epilepsy. 2A Chewbacca's original costume headpiece. Poor Chewbacca. In the original trilogy, he weathered insults like furry oaf, big walking carpet, and the coolest dig of all, flea bitten furball. But in 2012 auction, Chewie's got the last laugh when the screen used headpiece mask worn by the original film's actor, Peter Mayhew, realised $172,200, placing it amongst the most expensive Star Wars costume pieces ever sold. So, number one, we have George Lucas's Panavision camera. George Lucas's Panavision PSR 35mm camera was used to shoot some of the first Star Wars film in 1976. He sold at Profiles in History in 2011 for a record fee and of 2019 remains the most expensive piece of Star Wars memorabilia at $625,000. So I hope you enjoyed that little rundown of the top 10 plus extras of the most expensive Star Wars items sold at auction. Let me know if there's any top 10 items that you want me to talk about. I'm thinking about doing a uh, top 10 most expensive Star Wars figures. And then going on to vehicles, play sets, whatever. So if you'd like to see something like that, please subscribe. And press that bell icon so you know when I uh, upload my videos. And please consider joining the Patreon as you get those videos a day early, sometimes two days early. It only starts at a dollar a month and it really helps the channel out. And feel free to check my back catalogue because there's over 500 videos on there. Some good, some not so good. But I'm sure that you can find something that you really like. So until the next video, may the toys be with you. Enough to feed an army. Mr Potato Head was the first toy advertised on television. That ad campaign was also the first aimed squarely at children, rather than their parents, helping Mr Potato Head sell more than a million units in its first year.